Hi there, and welcome to this three-part series where we will be painting a lion, a giraffe, and a zebra using the same six colours in our palette. In this tutorial, we'll be painting the zebra. If you need some help with how to start, head over to my watercolour for beginners tutorials and go from there. I've got my usual setup, as you can see, and it's all listed here for you. And in addition to this, I've got my reference photo printed on A4 paper. You can use your own if you want to, uh, or if you want to use the same one as me, you can find a link in the description where you can download it. I know a lot of beginners can find the initial sketch hard work, so I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to transfer your image into a line drawing. Firstly, print out the image onto normal printer paper. Then flip the paper over and cover the back of the image with graphite. I find a graphite stick works best as you can quickly cover a large area, but you can also just use a pencil. Flip it back over and position it where you want your painting to be and secure it with some masking tape. I've positioned mine over to the right because I've sectioned off a small part on the left for testing paint colours. Now take your pen and draw around the zebra's markings. Make sure you don't press too hard. You can check that the image is transferring by just lifting part of the paper. Remember to keep it in place if you haven't finished your drawing. Remove the paper and there you have a good line drawing ready for you to start painting with. Once your line drawing is done, it's time to apply some masking fluid. I use this to preserve the white of the paper in places where there's white highlights. It's not essential, so if you don't want to use any, you just have to be mindful of keeping your highlighted areas free from paint. So I've poured some into my palette and I'm using a silicone tool to apply it to the page. I'm just starting by putting some masking fluid on the zebra's eye and a little bit around the mouth, putting in a few whiskers that I can see there on the image. Also in between the small stripes on the nose and the forehead and the lighter parts of the mane. You need to make sure this masking fluid is completely dry before we start painting. So while that's drying, it gives us a good chance to get our paint mixed and ready. We're using six colors, two light range, two mid range, and two dark range. And there's a warm and a cool version in each range. So you can use whatever you've got in your palette that matches, but I'm using Windsor and Newton watercolors and the colors are Gamboge Hue, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Purple Lake, and Payne's Grey. I've mixed a well of each colour before I start and I've painted a swatch onto the paper. 
So the left column is the cooler colours which we're going to use for the darker shadowed areas and the right column are the warmer colours used for the lighter areas. With watercolour we tend to work from light to dark. So the lightest areas here are on the front of the zebra's face. I'm using the wet and wet technique to apply a wash. Start with fresh clean water, then apply the paint to the wet area. This is the gamboge hue. Let that dry slightly because we're going to paint in some of the stripes with the burnt sienna and if the paper is too wet then the colours will blend uncontrollably. paper needs to be damp enough to see a slight sheen for the colour to blend with a soft edge. So using the burnt sienna I'm just going to paint in some of those lighter stripes on the zebra's forehead. As I paint further down onto his nose, I'm using a darker mix of the paint. So next we'll paint the cheek. This area is in more shadow than the front of the face so I'm using the mid-range colours. Start with a wash as before and I'm using the yellow ochre on the light parts and burnt umber for the stripes. Where the stripes meet the previous wash I've used clean water just to blend them together. While the stripes are still wet, I'm introducing some of the purple lake to the bottom of the chin. This is going to enhance the shadow under the chin.
While that first light layer is drying, let's move to the neck. This is going to be darker than the face and I want to go bold with the purple lake and Payne's grey colours. Although it's a dark area, we still need to start with the lightest parts. So using the wet and wet technique again, I'm going to cover the whole of the neck in clean water and then apply the purple lake. While the paper is still wet, I'm adding a little bit of yellow ochre to what would be the white parts of the zebra's coat. I'm using the least amount of brush strokes as possible so I don't muddy the colours together. The yellow ochre ties the colours in the face and the neck together nicely. It might look a bit odd at this point but remember it's just the first layer. So that needs to dry completely um, before we go any further, so let's move and work on the mane. So the mane and the mouth are darker than the main body, so I'm going to mix some darker colours. I'm using purple lake and burnt umber, which creates a dark warm purple with a red tinge and purple lake with Payne's grey for a cool dark purple. I've tested them on the page as you can see and make sure you make a note of what colours you've used for reference. So now we can start painting the mane and start with the clean water then apply the cooler mix into the dark stripes. I wanted a bit more accuracy on the mane at the front so I've used wet paint onto dry paper to create those sharp hairs. Remember the front of the face is in the light so I've started with the warm mix on the top of the nose and use the cool mix for the mouth as it's in the shadow. So that's our first layer complete. But we need to leave it to dry completely or you can help it along with a hairdryer on a cool low setting. Next it's time to start putting in some more definition to those lovely zebra stripes. Using the cool purple that we mixed earlier I'm painting in the dark stripes with wet paint onto dry paper. This is going to give us the defined edges we need. While the paint is still wet, I've taken a little bit more paint and dropped it onto the underside of the stripe to create a shadow. So continue with this until all of the stripes on the neck are done.
If the paint's dried too quickly, you can always use some clean water and a damp brush just to blend out the hard edge. Here I'm just using a damp brush to draw the paint up onto the mane and create that hair texture. I've used the same colours to put some more definition on the ear. As we reach the stripes on the cheek, we need to use the warm mix of Purple Lake and Burnt Umber and continue until all of the cheek and forehead stripes are done. Remember to drop more paint onto the shaded areas of each stripe.
Most of the defining parts of the eye are preserved with the masking fluid. So I've started the eye with a layer of our warm dark mix. So while the stripes are drying, move to the main where we can add some texture with some wet paint onto dry paper. I'm just using a thin brush and being quite random with the brush strokes to make the natural look of the hair in the main. So we're almost there with this painting and for the final layers of details I'm going to use Payne's Grey to add more contrast to the dark areas. Uh, so this is the stripes on the neck, uh, parts of the mane and the mouth and we need to define the eye as well. I'm using clean water first and then applying wet paint so that it will blend nicely with the paint layer beneath. So once that had all dried, uh, I've looked at the painting and decided that the cheek is a little bit too bright. It needed a bit more definition. So I've painted a wash of Purple Lake over just that area of the cheek to add the shadow. Just be careful when you're adding a wash on top of paint, because if you use too many brush strokes, it's gonna to start to lift the paint underneath, which it did very easily for me. You can just see it, it starting there. I've done the same thing on his forehead and also under his neck just to enhance the shadows on the lighter parts uh, and then I have taken some lamp black and just gone over the really dark part of the eye. So once that's dried completely, we can remove the masking fluid. 
Just lightly rub the areas where you've applied it and it should just peel off. I like to tidy up the edges where the masking fluid was, especially around the eye area. So I took a very small fine brush with Payne's Grey and made the eyelashes a little bit thinner. And that's it. Uh, I'm happy with how this one turned out. I think the Zebra Study is a good example of understanding light and dark and cool and warm colours. I hope you enjoyed painting along with me. Don't forget to try the next tutorial in this three part series. Make sure you've subscribed to keep up to date with all the latest tutorials. Bye for now.